When it comes to buying an affordable off-roader or even an affordable four-wheel drive to shuffle your family about, it doesn't get much better than the second generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. And in this video, we are going over the ultimate buyer's guide of what you should look for when buying a second gen Grand Cherokee known as the WJ. So let's start out with the basics. They built these from model years 1999 through 2004, and they built over 1.4 million of these vehicles. It was a very important vehicle for Jeep, and it was hugely popular. So why would you buy a WJ Grand Cherokee? Well, this vehicle was a great mix of size, comfort, durability, and off-road ability. And it's hard to match this vehicle's capability and affordability in today's SUV market. They really are special and they can be long-lived if you know what to look for. Now, of course, Jeeps do have a reputation for unreliability and there are certain models that certainly fall into that category. But for the most part, big, big if there, for the most part, the second generation of Grand Cherokee is a very long-lived vehicle. And yes, there are some horror stories out there, but it's not uncommon to find these uh, with well over 200, even 250,000 miles. Now, from 99 through 2004, there were a few changes. This one is an 01 that you're looking at, and it's called a Laredo, so it's more of an entry-level Grand Cherokee. They did facelift them later on in the production run, uh, but pretty minor facelifts. Now, you can tell a Laredo from the top of the line limited by looking at the bumpers. So a Laredo had these, what well, one time they were black, but now they're faded gray plastic bumpers, whereas a limited would have had painted bumpers. But it's not as big of a deal as you'd think because you get pretty much every option on a Laredo that you might have on a limited. So this one, for example, has leather seats. It's got the infinity gold sound system. It has heated seats. It's got just about every feature you'd come to expect out of even a newer luxury vehicle all available as an option on the Laredo. Look at that, even power seats. So trim wise, it doesn't really matter which one you get. Pick the one that suits your uh, budget and your needs for comfort the best. So a lot of these, for example, had cloth interiors, but of course, a big choice of leather interiors as well. Now let's talk about the powertrains and what the best option was. So the WJ was one of the very last uh, vehicles in the Jeep lineup to utilize what's called the four liter Jeep straight six. And the four liter straight six is one of the best engines ever made, period. Not just for Jeeps, but in general. The four liters last an insanely long time and they are super durable. Now this one, as you may notice, is not the four liter. This is the 4.7 liter V8 called the PowerTech. Which one is better? Well, the four liter is arguably longer lived and very easily fixed. Parts are everywhere. The issue with the four liter is they were mated to a less durable transmission. So the V8s had a better automatic than the, uh, than the four liter. But in terms of buying a vehicle that's gonna last you a super long time, that straight six is hard to beat. Not to say that the 4.7 V8 uh, is a bad engine. This was a big investment in terms of outreach for Chrysler at the time to develop this motor. It's actually uh, more sophisticated than the four liter, so it's got aluminum heads. Um, and it is a good engine if you take care of it. You can't let these engines overheat because the aluminum heads with the iron block could cause some warping there. Um, head gaskets are pretty common failures. You gotta keep an eye on the coolant gauge. But if you run them cool, uh, as long as you're not overheating them, these engines also very long lived. This car is 226,000 miles and still trucking along with ease. They also, as I mentioned, had the better transmission and they also had a better rear axle, reach, uh, rear axle, excuse me. So this is a Dana 44 rear axle, which is stronger than what you'd get on the straight six. They also tow a lot more. This will tow up to 6,500 pounds when properly equipped. So for my choice, I would look for a well-maintained 4.7, also called the 242 in some instances. One thing it is worth noting is the fuel economy is quite poor regardless of the engine figure, mid to low teens at best. So the time has uh, definitely not been kind to these engines in terms of efficiency, at least compared to new models. So let's talk about the four-wheel drive system. Now you can get a Grand Cherokee in two-wheel drive. I wouldn't. I mean, the coolest part about these vehicles is the go anywhere capability. I would stick to a four-wheel drive model and that's where things get really, really complicated because there are so many different four-wheel drive systems. Um, the thing you need to know is that the best one is, in my opinion, this one. It's called the Select Track. Uh, two high, part-time, uh, four-wheel drive, full-time four-wheel drive, neutral, and four-low. Of course, a manual shifter there. 
to engage the different modes. The Select Track, and you can tell the Select Track because it says Select Track, is a, um, a very durable unit. There was also uh, the Quadra Track, and then the Limited said something called the Quadra Drive. Now, on paper, the Quadra Drives are the very coolest. I mean, they did have some very sophisticated technology where there were fluid um, base differentials that could distribute torque left and right depending on which wheels were spinning and it was like all really high-tech stuff and when it works it works very very well but I've read they're a little picky on tire size if you want to change tire size the uh, the differentials can go a little wonky and they're also uh, something you need to maintain so like it was called the very lock I believe differential systems they need to be maintained and uh, at this point they're old enough where they probably haven't been and then you just end up with open diffs like you have on this vehicle this is apparently kind of the unicorn the v8 with a select track it's got the bigger rear uh, axle which is better uh, still has a small I think it's a Dana 30 for an axle but better than the six-cylinder axles in the rear now the interiors on these vehicles oh they're so comfortable they're like lounge chairs you just lean back in the leather and kind of float along which is nice uh, the leather seats would be my choice very durable overall uh, this one does have some cracking in the driver's side and then of course the armrest is starting to go but um, Overall, in the interiors, you could get it with navigation in some of the later models. You could get it with the automatic climate control system as well, on um, like the Limiteds, for example. But I don't really have any of that, and I don't really need any of that because this is just a budget off-roader. Easy, simple, durable interiors to understand. So we've got the heated seats, as I mentioned, automatic transmission selector, a couple of cup holders, and a durable center armrest. And that's pretty much there is all there is to it. This one does have the home link system, which was pretty high tech for 2001. But apart from that, a uh, very comfortable place to spend time. Just doesn't look very flashy. So look for seat conditions, uh, cracks in the dashboard, make sure everything works. For example, this one has a bad AC system, which is kind of a shame, but you know, I've lived with the windows for now. Um, other things to look out for on the interior headliners, make sure you don't have big rips and tears in the headliners because that stuff can get pretty expensive. All right, let's check out the trunk. So the cool part about these vehicles is even though they're relatively small, I need to unlock it, even though they're relatively small, the trunk and storage situation is remarkably good. And that is due to the fact that they probably have less sophisticated safety systems than some of the newer vehicles on the market today, but lots of room on a relatively small vehicle. This one does have the six disc CD changer. You could never get this vehicle with more than five seats, so in the States they all had five seats. In fact, I think the first Grand Cherokee to have seven is the brand new one towing. Uh, I like the uh, tow package. I'd recommend it. It's got the seven pin wiring as well as your receiver hitch. So right around 6,500 pounds of towing. Um, and then the other big thing you got to look out for when buying a Grand Cherokee is rust. So unibody construction vehicle, it's not body on frame like a pickup truck. Make sure you ideally get it up on a lift and look for rust underneath, especially uh, down here by the rockers is a very common place for them to go. Floors, not uncommon to see. I wouldn't say they rust any faster than other SUVs from this era, but it is something to look out for. And then of course, stuff like this peeling clear coat, that's all bound to happen over age and on these old Chrysler vehicles, especially. So on the road, it's amazing how soft these Grand Cherokees are. I know they're solid axle vehicles, but they really ride um, very floaty almost. It's worth uh, checking the steering, looseness can develop in the steering from um, worn suspension and steering components like track bars. Um, and apparently you can also get death wobble if they're severely worn, so something to look out for. All right, let's try some acceleration. Full throttle. Wowzer. Really is surprisingly decent for a 20 year old vehicle. It takes off pretty well. Uh, one of the benefits of getting the V8, and I have heard these with aftermarket exhaust. They also sound pretty darn cool. Uh, brakes should be nice and firm. Of course, these vehicles do have ABS, make sure that works. Um, airbags as well, you don't want an airbag light on. That kind of stuff can get pretty expensive, but very nice full suite of uh, gauges. So oil pressure, temperature, uh, voltage, and fuel all have their own individual gauges. But overall, good road tripper. And then also make the trip, make sure the transmission shifts well because that will probably eventually be the downfall of any WJ. This one has made it 226,000 on its original transmission and its original engine um, with no concerns. But now we're starting to get those concerns with the transmission. <laughs> Even though it shifts perfectly, a uh, check engine light related to the trans is always a big concern. So what should you pay for one of these? Well, 
the used car market's really inflated right now and you may end up spending in some cases like five, six, seven thousand dollars for a good one, but typically four to five will get you a pretty good one. That's kind of your target market right there is four to five thousand dollars will get you a nice WJ. And just enjoy the thing. I mean maintain it. Um, Look out for rust, and apart from that, very good off-road, easy to lift, solid axle in the front, very big aftermarket support and community on these WJs. Strongly recommend them. The older Grand Cherokees I think look cooler and are a little bit more retro. Those are called the ZJs, but that's, those had a lot of especially transmission issues. And then the, the later WKs, also good vehicles, but they brought an independent suspension in the front, and then you've got a lot of really kind of crummy plastics in those. So this is the sweet spot and uh, I love them. I really think they're great vehicles. Uh, we've got a full series coming up around this vehicle and a couple of others over at TFL Off-Road, so be sure to stay tuned for that. It's called A Few Bucks Less. I'm really excited about it. So as always, this has been Tommy with TFL Classics. Check out um, you know, our websites for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. Also consider following us on TikTok because we got some cool stuff going on there.